Good evening. This is Dr. Thomas Klein. I'm coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina. I am working with the National Pain Council to make sure that everybody in the United States can receive pain medications for any problem that they have. Did you know that if you read the FDA um, blurb uh, on um, pain medicines, it says it's okay to even treat people with heroin addiction with pain medicines. Now that's coming from, you know, the people in charge of pills. But it's against the federal law to treat somebody who has heroin addiction with pain medicines. So today we want to just talk about the actual medicine. We want to talk about heroin. This is a reproduction of a heroin bottle sold back in the 1920s. Prior to the Harrison Act in 1914, you could buy heroin without a prescription um, and it was used for um, pain control, it was used for diarrhea, it was used for babies with colic. Oh my god, babies with colic? You're giving babies heroin? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So, the first drug that was made uh, before the Civil War for pain was opium. The opium comes right from the plant. You can eat the poppy seeds or they make a tincture out of it, which is a solution of alcohol and uh, tar from the poppy plant. So they had tincture of opium and it was fine. You could drink it. They used to sprinkle it in wounds during the Civil War. Then they actually made a drug from that called morphine. So morphine was the first drug. Then around the turn of the century, morphine kind of caused a lot of side effects. So the scientists at um, Bayer, a huge pharmaceutical company in Germany, you know, bare aspirin. <laughs> uh, they just made a little modification to the um, morphine and they're called diacetyl morphine or diamorphine, which trade name, heroin. So heroin is the trade name for diamorphine. So diamorphine is a uh, product of morphine, which is a product of opium. So heroin is a pain medicine. It's an opioid pain medicine. All pain medicines, aside from Tylenol, which is the only other pain medicine, all, all pain medicines are opioids. And opioids are pain medicines. So we shouldn't be using the word opioid by itself. It's too highly charged. It's like the word narcotic. They get rid of the word narcotic and then switch it to a worse word. Opioids. He takes opioids. Okay, just start in your own mind substituting the word opioid with pain medicine. So when you read about um, he died of um, heroin overdose, read it as pain medicine because heroin is a pain medicine and it's used in all the countries in the world except the United States. Why is that? Because the federal government in 1924 decided if you get rid of all the heroin, you won't have any more heroin addiction. That was a hundred years ago. Didn't seem to have worked. So in the UK, for example, diamorphine, trade name heroin, is used for babies and children because it's not bitter. Morphine's real bitter. Um, in hospice, when I was taking care of people at the end of their life, um, the pain medicine we used was a um, morphine drops. They were so bitter that people didn't even want to take it. If we could prescribe diamorphine drops, it would be much better. Also, um, heroin or diamorphine is used in the UK for labor and delivery. Um, it's legal everywhere except the United States. If you're in Canada and um, you need a painkiller, they can prescribe diamorphine for you. It's great pain medicine. It's about the same as oxycodone or Percocet. It's not any stronger. It's, it's the same. 
The only reason it's thought to be stronger is because it's used in high doses. So the addiction to heroin, is that different than the addiction to other pain medicines? No, they're pretty much all the same. You can become addicted and maintain an addiction with codeine, oxycodone, Vicodin. Jamie Lee Curtis had a heroin type addiction, but she didn't need heroin because it's the reason people use it is because it's cheap. She could afford Percocet, I mean Vicodin. So she took Vicodin for many years, but she was still addicted. So the other interesting thing is that the only people that become addicted to this stuff are people with a genetic propensity. There's something wrong with their genetics, it runs in families, so that when they process any kind of pain medicine, doesn't matter, as I said, doesn't matter which one, it could be heroin, that instead of getting a little buzz, they get a cosmic experience. When you talk to people about the high, a word we don't like to use at the National Pain Council, when they become euphoric from this stuff, it's unbelievable. It's like the sky opens up, there's nothing wrong in the world, it's an experience nobody has ever had. Good experiences that we have are peanuts compared to the experience you get with any kind of opiate pain medicine. If you have the genetic propensity, the gene is A118G, they know exactly where it is. There's lots and lots of articles to show it, but it's very difficult for people to believe this. Other addictions like methamphetamine and cocaine and even uh, and marijuana, if you do it too much, are not genetically linked. They say it runs in families. Well, that's because the family all smokes uh, marijuana or takes cocaine. But it is not truly a genetic disease. To become addicted to methamphetamine, which is the worst of all the addictions, far worse, an heroin addiction. You have to take it for a long period of time and you have to have abnormalities in your personality. That's where all this stuff comes from. Not from opiate addiction. It happens suddenly when people are not expecting it and it's only less than 1% of the population. Only one in 1,000 people become addicted to pain medicines. Now, very important to know that because it happens abruptly on the first few pills, pain pills, and a person goes to the moon, that's not normal. We have a physician in Boston, and I keep his email to me, that on his first pill, he went to the moon when he became addicted to Vicodin as a physician and took, his, took five years out of his uh, career but he's okay and he's back practicing. And he wrote a book, if you wanna read it, it's um, called Free, F-R-E-E, -E, Refills. Other interesting things about um, heroin is it, it does appear that most heroin addicted people uh, work, are employed, and 75%. So this is not necessarily people all behind dumpsters. It's a disease, it's a medical disease, and there's a medical treatment. And the medical treatment for it are, are uh, specially uh, made opioids, pain medicines, that can treat this disease. So it's a bad disease, but in terms of crime, people with opiate addiction have the lowest rate of serious crime. The people with the highest are alcohol and methamphetamine and cocaine. So it's not as dangerous as you think. The reason that people with opiate addiction are considered so horrible is they steal and they cheat and they lie. And that really bothers families a lot more than if they were violent, like with, with alcohol. 
So heroin is obviously a problem, as are all pain medicines, but it's not the demon that it's been made out to be. People are very afraid of this stuff, and that's reasonable, but like President Roosevelt said, it's more fear of fear itself. So those are some of the facts about heroin, to give you the straight story, and the National Pain Council is going to be um, publishing a, a little piece about um, the truth of this pain medicine. Good evening.